What's up, y'all? Coming at you with another video. So this time, I'm really excited to be working on this. So yeah, I'm just gonna get right to it and I'll show you guys what we're working on. So let's go. But yeah, so this is gonna be my next little project I'm working on. These right here are 2005 and up Acura RL calipers. The reason why I'm switching over to these and why I'm so excited about them is because they're fixed calipers. Big brake calipers. Four pistons. Bang. Enough talking for now. I'm just going to get right into it and clean these off. And then I'm going to rebuild the kind of do like a little rebuild kit on the pistons. So I'm going to actually take the pistons out and everything like that. So like I said, I'm going to clean these up. I got my rotary tool and then also once I kind of clean that up and everything, clean the outside, I've got this rebuild kit. What I'm going to go ahead and start off with is a wire wheel. So I'm just going to wire wheel kind of like the, the outside surfaces, you know. Whenever you are cleaning this and doing it, I really recommend not touching the inside. What I would do is get some type of brushes or anything like that just because you don't want to mess with this surface mess with the surface of the piston with using any type of like power tool on the inside you do run the risk of damaging these so if you really do want to clean the insides of these like this portion and all of this section then get a brush just make sure you hand hand brush it I'm really not gonna touch this I mean I might brush it off a little bit but I'm not really gonna deal too much with the inside just because at the end of the day once these are on the car this is really all you're gonna be seeing is that this is gonna be covered there's gonna be brake pads on it you're not gonna see that and you drive around for about a day or two and it's gonna be covered in brake dust anyway so all right so hitting the caliper with the wire wheel is pretty straightforward um, so yeah I'm just gonna get to it and then yeah, I just want to start off with the big areas, and then from there, I'm going to move over to the smaller wire wheel. To this one, uh, to kind of get the nooks and crannies. So that's that out of the way. I'm gonna switch this over. All right, so get the small one on now, and yeah, let's just get cracking on this. Bro, yeah, this thing's done. <laughs> There's the second pass done with the smaller wire wheel. And I am pretty happy with it. If you look at it all in the sunlight, look at that. Dang, that's glossy. So from here, I'm gonna get started on the other one. But before I start on the next caliper, I wanna get something done. So let's get started.
and ta-da! So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this to the rest of the Acura logo, and yeah, once I have it shaved, I'll go ahead and move on to the next one. And ta-ra-ra-da. There it is. So, there it is all shaved. Uh, the reason why I wanted to just shave that off is because I'm just like OCD as far as having a big Acura logo on a car that's a Honda. Even though, yes, they are the exact same thing. Yeah, I know a lot of people don't really mind it. They don't care. And it's whatever. This is just my preference. I just, I would just prefer to shave it off and just have it just a big caliper, you know? Boom. Go ahead and get the other one done. Then I will get back to you guys whenever I start on actually pulling the pistons out and everything like that. Got these done. This is pretty good stopping point for me as far as just getting these cleaned up. As you can see, they're a lot cleaner than they started off as. Just kind of wanted to share with you guys my rundown, my reasoning as to why I ended up choosing to go with this. This, in my opinion, is probably the most bang for your buck. Just because I want to let you guys know, I bought these calipers for like 200 bucks. So $100 a piece, and that's really cheap. Definitely did not want to spend thousands of dollars on a brake system. So I went secondhand OEM. So another question I've been asked about big brakes and a lot of people kind of wonder, a question I had when I was first looking into it is, is why? Why go big brakes? And I mean, there are a lot of reasons for it. There are a lot of benefits. The main thing is if you're gonna start going for like a track setup or you wanna start like pushing a little bit more out of your car, with added horsepower, you want to make sure you have added stopping power as well, and that's a lot of thing that that's a that's a big thing that a lot of people overlook. Some of the major benefits are pad selection. Another really big benefit as well is switching pads. Typically, with floating caliper setup, you have to kind of like pull the actual caliper off the sliding pins and everything like that just to be able to get to the bracket to replace the pads. With this, all it is is this little bridge spring and then two pins that slide in here this is a really good setup because whenever you want to go put some performance pads on boom slide the pins out you take that little spring off replace the pads put the spring back in pins back in and there so with four pistons you are getting extra bite extra stopping power but one of the main things that i wanted it for is consistency you're gonna have consistency with equal pressure being applied to both sides of the rotor. That's a very big one for me. I think another really good benefit of this is with the big brake caliper, it allows you to run a bigger rotor. So with bigger rotors, you have a lot more choices as far as performance rotors. Before you do look into doing the RL big brake setup, there are some cons to doing this. The main one is these things are huge that's just the only way to put it like these things are massive so keep that in mind if you are looking into this you are most likely going to have to run 16 inch wheels uh sometimes with spacers so keep that in mind if you do do the swap you are adding extra weight because this when you pair it along with a bigger rotor too so account for that you're adding unsprung mass if you are going for like a track setup and stuff you want to try to limit the amount of unsprung mass. That's why you look into companies like StopTech and Brembo and AP Racing and everything like that and their big brake kits, you see them, they're very slim, the very bare minimum of material that's on there. And that's where spending all that extra money does come into play and you are, you are definitely getting a better product by spending that extra money. But for us regular Joe Schmoes that are just trying to, you know, squeeze a little bit of extra performance or just kind of upgrade the, the stock performance, this is definitely a good way to go because 350 bucks for a big brake setup, you really can't beat it. So I got two, two of the pistons out. You're gonna wanna get different width blocks of wood, just kind of fit these in here somehow. And what you're gonna wanna do is, uh, what I did was got air compressor, so air blower, 
and uh, just pretty much put it in where you're gonna put the brake line in and you're gonna wanna blow on it just like gently, like little bursts at a time. Because what that is, what that's simulating, that's simulating hydraulic pressure and that's wanting to press the pistons out. Really what I would recommend is only pulling one out at a time. So pretty much just block it off to the point where, where like let's just say these two pistons, put blocks of wood there where those two pistons cannot move and try to, I use the C-clamp and I C-clamp this piston. So pretty much only this piston is gonna be targeted as far as the, the pressure. So, so you're gonna wanna do a little burst and it's gonna go, and it's gonna pop out. And uh, you're gonna wanna have something here to protect it because you don't want it, when it flies out, you don't want it to be damaging. You definitely don't wanna have your fingers here, anything. Even just a little burst is gonna make it fly out. So you wanna have a block of wood or something just kinda keeping it safe. Once you have it out, this is kinda what you're looking at as far as the pot or piston, whatever you wanna call it. So this is what presses against the brake. Boom, that's what presses against the pad right there. This is all inside, this is all this inside that cylinder. This, you need to be very, very careful with it. You need to make sure it's very smooth. Don't scratch it, don't sand it, don't anything. You shouldn't really do anything with that except clean it with like brake fluid and a new rag. Always use a new rag on it because you don't wanna gouge any of these surfaces. If you look in there, that little, that little gasket, right there there's this little rubber gasket that thing right there sealing this surface that's the only thing that's that's sealing it just clean it up i just cleaned it up with brake fluid with the uh, brake parts cleaner not brake fluid not brake fluid brake parts cleaner when you are pulling this out be very gentle that you don't scratch the surface okay and then if you are replacing it it doesn't really matter if you if you tear a hole in it or whatever, whenever you are putting it back in, just make sure you grease it up. Um, any type of rebuild kit usually will come with some sort of grease. You wanna make sure you put a generous amount of grease on that uh, so it can slide in. And make sure when you put it in, you put it in as straight as possible, as even. You don't wanna make it crooked and get scratches on it. One more trick to kind of make your life easier is when you uh, grease the piston, put it in, and then uh, just kind of leave it out about yay far, you know, like a like what quarter inch sticking out. And then uh, whenever you're gonna put, whenever you're gonna put the new dust boot in, it really really helps if you grease it. Just put a put a good uh, layer of grease all around it, so you can see this one's pretty greased up makes it really easy. I just put it along the, the piston side first and then just kind of start it up at the top and then just kind of r keep one finger on it, holding it at the top and just run my finger around it and it'll slide right into where it needs to fit. Just make sure you take your time with this, do it right. And yeah, I'll see you guys whenever I'm all done with it. Now that I just got those calipers done and rebuilt, looking really good i'm really happy with the way those came out i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up here thank you guys for watching hope you guys did enjoy and learned something new today or found something useful if you did go ahead and like the video if you are interested in seeing me rebuild the little baby rear calipers then stay tuned for the next episode go ahead and hit subscribe other than that once all the calipers are done and rebuilt I'm gonna go ahead and paint them and I'll show you guys the proper way of painting calipers. So stay tuned, subscribe, and see you in the next one guys. Later.